Welcome to our studios here at the SSL factory in Oxford, England. We use this facility to demonstrate our products and host training sessions, but this is also the playground where we develop and test our new products. We see this as our Lego studio, a traditional big room built up using SSL modular products from the XLogic series of analog processors. For these products, we took a cut and paste approach to the classic circuits from our large format consoles and reformatted them into building blocks of analog goodness suitable for the modern project studio. We didn't change the designs, the components, or even the factory we made them in. We simply took the consoles that engineers and producers have made part of their signature sound for the last three decades and resized them into Lego blocks of precision audio processing for the modern producer to use in their own project rooms. This video will talk about the difference between the E and G EQ curves, and we will do this using the X-Desk, X-Patch and X-Rack. While SSL actually fitted a number of different EQ circuits in the SL4000E console from 1981 onwards, including the brown knob, orange knob and pink knob, the most famous is the 242 black knob circuit from the 1983 version of the console. This was a constant Q design, meaning that the shape of the EQ bell stayed constant, irrespective of the gain settings. When the G-Series console was launched in 1989, SSL introduced an entirely new EQ circuit, the 292 G-Series. In contrast to the E-Series designs, the G-Series EQ was a variable Q design, meaning that the shape of the EQ bell narrowed as you increased or decreased the gain amount. SSL often ship G-series consoles with a mixture of E and G-series EQ circuits so that engineers had access to both types while mixing. Today's SSL consoles and modules have both E and G curves on them, but what does the difference between them sound like? Here you can see a graphical representation of an E-series EQ. You can see that as I change the gain, the curve does not change regardless of the gain setting. This is particularly useful when you want to apply small amounts of gain changes on a specific frequency, such as lifting out the pick sound from a bass guitar, or notching out a ring or a buzz from a snare drum. Here you can see a graphical representation of a G-series EQ. You can see that as I change the gain, the curve starts out flat, and then becomes narrower as the gain moves further away from 0 dB. This is particularly useful when you want to apply a small amount of gain in broad strokes. Great for shaping a vocal or putting an overall EQ on a bus. It should be noted that E and G curves both have exactly the same shape at maximum gain. So cranking the boost up and switching between E and G will not let you hear any difference between the curves. It's the way they reach that point that gives them their characteristic sound. Let's see the differences and how they sound with a couple of examples. I'm going to bring a snare out of my DAW session and bring it up onto the channel of the X-Desk. I'm going to insert one of the silver EQ modules from my X-Rack onto the snare channel of the X-Desk. I've taken out some of the bite in the upper mids to soften the snare with an E curve. And I've matched the settings with a G curve. First, you'll hear the unprocessed sound, then the E curve, and finally, the G-curve EQ. Notice how the G-curve takes out more of the surrounding frequencies, and that using the E-curve gives us a more focused result. If you want to compare these two files with a good level of fidelity, then you can download a pack of .wav files from the SSL website. In our next example, I'm going to run a group of kick and synth bass through the EQs. We're still using the X-Rack Silver EQ module. I'm going to boost the lows and the high mids with a G-curve, and then I'll match the settings with an E-curve. First you'll hear the unprocessed audio, then the G-curve, and finally the E-curve EQ.
On the E-series curve, notice how the boosts are more controlled due to the finer curve, a tighter sound. And with the G-curve, listen to it boost more of the high frequencies. As I said, if you want to compare these two files with a good level of fidelity, you can download a full pack of .wav files from our website. Thanks for watching this video, and you might want to check out the rest of our LEGO Studio video series.